And the way they've evolved over time is like now it auto plays and Instagram stories and all that shit that's taking place. It's like, and all the, even like the way these um, social people are out there, like the Gary V's of the world, the Billy Jeans of the world, is like they have cameramen following them, following them around just to capture everything, to edit it together and produce a piece of content. This is e commerce uncensored. Brought to you by Fast Forward Unlimited. We're coming to you fully loaded and exposed with all the strategies and techniques for growing your e-commerce business. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us on another episode of E-Commerce Uncensored. This is episode number 67, and I'm Kevin Minnell, and I'm here with Jason Caruso and Paul Chu. And today we have a special guest. And his name is? Larry. My name is Larry Garofolo. Larry Garofolo. Garofolo. You guys never got his last name. Maybe I should have gotten his last name before we started. (laughs) The fourth. (laughs) The fourth. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. You're the the fourth. fourth. But thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming on, man. So anyway, today we're going to talk about a topic which I think is is really a vital part of all marketing strategies. Larry. Sorry. Got excited. Larry is a vital part of all business. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Because he's a videographer, and inside, video is important. That's an inside joke. <laughs> an, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, so it's did you guys say it was video already? Yes. It's video. So Larry is um, is a guy who's just starting out in kind of the video production area, and he's actually going to be helping us with doing some promotional videos. Do you around. know that he's just starting? Are you just starting? Well, he, I'm sure doing he's, it for a while. I'm yeah. sure he's been doing it for a while, but he's really just... He's starting to build his brand. There you go. Yeah, exactly. starting to build. Yeah, right on this end of the business, right with working with clients. And yes, stuff. and, yes, and right. using it for marketing. Because he made it sound like you were just starting doing video, but you've been doing it for. Oh a while. yeah, my whole life. Right, yeah. a lot of experience. So, and you have some background. Your right, your family is in is in broadcasting, right? Um, not so much. No, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, the information that background. Paul gave us. So. <laughs> he did. You said I he did. Paul, well, you said broad, his dad was broadcasting in broadcast. Ve- broadcast venue. Oh, oh yeah. Well, um, <laughs> my dad's an entrepreneur. Go. And he started a new company, ooh, 2006, 7, 8. Uh, it was a broadcasting and streaming company. So it was like before Instagram and Facebook can stream, you know, people would hire him and his crew. He's not a nerd. He just hired him. Um, <laughs> uh, go to like a sporting event. A kid, you know, we had a few high schools and, um, you know, shoot their football, you know, their football games. So, you know, the mom and dad or grandma, you know, in Florida could watch it. And so I got involved with that um, as intern in college, and uh, that's pretty much. I, you, you guys do a little bit of like, because uh, I was even thinking a bit, thinking about it, and telling them it was a lot of broadcasting for the auctions. Oh yeah, just in yeah. general, like the tech yeah. world, and you guys streaming video, and you know, I mean, it's a little bit different than marketing. That's why you're a little bit so new for the marketing. The company aspect. I work for is um, we provide a online bidding service to auctions, auctioneers. Mm-hmm. So if you ever um, saw the ones on TV. The car auctions, cars, those, yeah, yeah. really fancy ones. Yeah. We used to do them until they developed their own software. Right. Yeah. But you know what I could tell is from that pictures and videos, that's what sells. Mm-hmm. You know, it's no longer just a flyer. It's no longer just words. Yeah. Actually, I read something today. Actually, I hope I don't butcher it. Um, what was it? it? Was users retain? It was some crazy eighty percent something more from a video, and ten percent from text. The the remembering the message of the, it was ninety percent. Uh, people remember a message of a video over text. That's be- yeah, text. that's because for thousands of years we've been communicating through stories. Mm-hmm. We've Kevin and I spoke about this in, 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 in I don't know the number of the podcast, but a while back that basically I'm getting into a lot of copywriting, and the couple of guys that I'm following who are copywriters basically say that people think that it's this far out thing and it's like you have to be like have a huge vocabulary and and really all copywriting or effective advertising copy uh, or copywriting really just comes down to telling stories and basically they say how if you sit around a table with a bunch of people everybody starts off let me tell you a story about this guy Mike I knew or and basically our brains retain stories not details Right. So like if you say uh, like, yeah, I, I made a thousand dollars yesterday and then 
400 people walked by me, I made another $1,000. That's very hard to remember. But if you said, I was in New York City, I was walking down the street, and somehow I would pass like 400 people, and from those 400 people, I made $1,000, and then the next 500 people I walked by, I made another 12. It's a little easier to remember the story. Now, you may not get those numbers right, but it doesn't matter. The moral Mm -hmm. of the story is going to be there, and that's basically what video does. Mm -hmm. Video tells a story. It sets a mood. It sets a feeling, and people buy with emotion. And when you can set an emotion, people remember it. You know, you touch. That's why you see all these videos of the dogs. You know, like oh, the sad dogs. Yeah, like the sad dogs, like in the street. Those aren't. Those aren't right. Those are unfair. Well, it's like if you think about it, like the ASAP, the ACP, whatever is it? ASAP. ASAP. No, as soon as possible. No, that's HSA. No, ASAP. Animals. ASPCA. ASPCA, right. So, like, they show, like, these oh, dogs in the from. gutters, and it's like, how are you showing that? You're supposed to, like, be helping dogs, and, like, you're... But they're 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 triggering an emotion, and they know that people buy through emotion, and they always say a picture's worth a thousand oh, words. Right. So you can show one picture or one frame or one something and portray, a, you know, a, a lot of different emotions. Now... The funny part about it is, is I don't like reading books. My wife reads about 10 books a week, but she'll tell me that she likes reading books more than movies yeah. because they can get more detailed. So that's kind of like a mind thing. I don't know. How can they say, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Like yeah, the, I can't get that either. A picture's but, worth a thousand words, but, you I know. Mean, I guess you, it makes sense. Like, books are a long-term thing. You know, you're not going to read it in a minute or 30 seconds, but when you're advertising something or trying to get someone to do something, which is what advertising marketing is, it's got to be quick. And video is the most yeah, effective I, way. Pictures. She's just saying that books are more descriptive. Well, how does that make sense if they say you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, but we're, I, I don't know, just to me, it, like, it's just like a brain. <laughs> we're not big readers. Well, I think, I think, I mean, I, Larry, I think you're in a really good space. Like, I think it's really, like, it's really taking off. And I think the way the platforms are going, like Facebook, like it's funny because I am so engaged with videos. That's all I get anymore. Video after video. My wife's a little different like yours. It's like she'll get actual posts and pictures and stuff. Every single post on my Facebook page is video. In your, in your feed. Yeah. And the way they've evolved over time is like now it auto plays and Instagram stories and all that shit that's taking place. It's like and all the even like the way these um, social people are out there like the Gary V's of the world. The Billy Jeans of the world is like they have cameramen following them, following them around just to capture everything, to edit it together and produce a piece of content. It's just like such a hot space to mm-hmm. be in, and I think, I think that's what we're talking about here, and how important it is to produce videos and publish videos on a regular basis. Yeah, but 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 the video has to have some. Has to be pulling at emotions, and it has to right. be it has to have a message or something message. Kind of has to be telling symbolic. a story. Yeah. Has to be taking you through a journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, I was uh, doing so, like when I first started getting on this copywriting journey, so to speak. Um, I was following this guy. I forgot his name, but he basically basically says that every single movie that you watch, every single one, there's not one a kids movie, an adult movie. There is not one movie. That doesn't start off with someone. Then some conflict mm-hmm. or villain comes in and screws them up. And then somehow the the, the main person of the story prevails and live ha- lives happily, happily ever after. Every single movie. I mean, even watch a kid's movie. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean Secret Life of Pets, I'm thinking about. Oh, like, that's a great movie. Great movie. Yeah. But what happens? Like, this little dog is having, like, a great time, and this big giant dog comes, screws everything up. They go in the sewers. All these villains try to kill him, and then all of a sudden, at the end, like, they all become friends. And, yeah. you know, so every single movie, and, and the reason is because our brains, as human beings, have been developed through storytelling. And... Like, if they just had, like, the person and, like, everything was, like, peachy keen and, like, like, their whole lives were great, like, nobody would be interested in that. Like, there has to be some conflict. There has to be a storyline to what you're watching. And that's sort of why video is so powerful because mm-hmm. you could take someone on a journey literally in five minutes on a video, right? Like, and it's, like, zero effort. They just have to sit there and watch it. 
Mm-hmm. They don't have to read. They don't have to think about. They just can. Yeah, you know. and I don't like to think. Like especially when I'm on social media. Like that's, that's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. I read if I see if I'm attracted to the piece of content or the image that's there. I'll I guess I'll go to the text next. But I really I'm not in a position to read. Well, so you don't I, like to ever think. I mean, you scheduled an appointment today when you knew somebody was coming in, so that's not really thinking. Or you got in a phone call with a client, right? Are you done? No, I'm just <laughs> ma- I'm making the point. You're right. You don't think. I mean, that's a perfect example. At least it someone took this here long has for him to, to think. It is God. It ain't you. No, no, it, it's me because the guy told us he'll be in an hour, and you jump on a call with a client. I had scheduled the call before I knew he was on his way. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry I had to do something for our paying clients. I know. <laughs> because you've been just sitting around watching the Masters and swinging a golf club all day. Oh, I know. And you, Is that true? So Is this that golf club that's sitting right next to us, you weren't sitting there hitting your hitting your chair with it four or well, five times. while I was on the phone with a client. Okay. And I Why do you have to interrupt the podcast with these No, I was nonsense. just... No, no. We don't agree a lot. So I was just agreeing that you don't think. So I was just trying to... Just you tell know, a story. Save, story. save, save this stuff for your marriage counsel. Anyway, so <laughs> so I mean, we let me let me track back a little bit because I I wanted to just talk about the time that we I never met Larry. This is the first time I met Larry, but we did have some engagement with him uh, two years two years or so ago. We had a product come in and the the skateboards yeah. and the and the scooters Ario, and things. Ario, a- a- Aeroactive. Yeah, Aeroactive. Aeroactive yes. Aero, yeah. It was a company that came to us and they said they basically wanted us to build their business for them, like everybody yeah, else website, comes to us yeah. and. <laughs> Marketing. They don't want to be involved. They just want to like have us build everything and have us sell their product. So, you know, it was a really cool thing. And we felt like video was the best opportunity to actually sell the product because we were going to do Facebook ads for them. And I think we built their website. Mm-hmm. We we're going to do Facebook ads for them. So we were like, fuck, let's do a video. Paul, Paul's a skateboarder and a all that kind of shit. Action that sports, scene. yeah. I don't know, Larry, do you skateboard? Or I mean, something? I don't jump as high because I'm afraid of heights, but I'll, I'll try to keep up with Paul. So basically, I, saw, I, I told Paul, I was like, why don't you take all the products home? Do you want me to give you a second, uh, Jason? Got a little technical difficulty. He's, he's, got his, he's got his mic boom all jacked up. <laughs> so anyway, don't mind that sound in the background. That's just <laughs> Jason taking we can take, down. We'll take his audio out. All right. So yeah. So I told Paul, I was like, hey, Paul, why don't you just take, they brought it, they had like scooters and they had like this um, urban scooter that had big wheels on it and they had a skate, longboard skateboard. I was yeah. like. Why don't you take these products home with you over the weekend? And he said he had Larry who had um, That's right. he had a drone, drone and he had GoPros, he's got all this great all equipment. The, We're like, equipment. that's going to be awesome. So he, they basically just went out and they created this this story around this product, which was pretty cool. How it was like this urban product, how it went fast. I mean, it was <laughs> it was really yeah. cool. They used the drone, they used handheld shit. It came out really awesome, and it, it's really the kind of shit that's gonna. That's gonna that would drive this product home. Unfortunately, it didn't work out with the client, but we, he came with a really great shit. So we just got on the topic of talking about video again, and he said, you know, Larry, you know, he's getting into this. He's, you know, he's trying to build his brand. He's, he's doing. Are you ready? You good? I I, I hope so. He's back. Don't worry, everybody. Jason's back. His boom is back together. Hey, my mic we, hope you, we hope you enjoyed the peace and quiet from him, though. <laughs> anyway, so you know we. At that point, we realized that, you know, this guy knows his shit. He's got the equipment, obviously, and it was just really cool. So when we started talking uh, a couple weeks ago about how we were going to pivot the business, not, not pivot the business, but pivot the, the podcast a little bit and make it more lifestyle-based, make it more conversational-based, we figured we, we needed to do something with video. We needed to document our lives and the things that we feel are going to attract more listeners. So that's when we called on Larry, and now... We're just, you know, I'm meeting Larry for the first time and he's kind of, kind (laughs) of, we had a big discussion before we started Mm -hmm. about like our plans moving forward. And I think it's going to be a really fun thing. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I was just listening to, I forgot, I was listening to some talk show and the guy was basically saying how like media buyers or like advertisers are taking a lot of their budget and sticking them in like to online Mm -hmm. and and like it's actually coming out of tv and it's it's coming into digital and a lot of it is is video based so i think you're in a good spot Mm -hmm. i mean product videos for e-commerce stores i mean anybody i've ever followed that does you know millions of dollars in physical products they all do it through video they all do and if you think about it the things that you can do with 
social media now like you literally don't have to have anyone click or actually engage and do another action with a video in order to create an audience or get your message out there yeah to get your message out there but also when, when it comes to retargeting when you're on Facebook if you have a video on Facebook that you're playing you can collect the amount of people who watch the video a certain length. Yeah. So if you have a video on Facebook, someone watches it 75% of the time, never clicks, never hits like, never comments, never shares, you can then turn around and retarget them again on, on Facebook or you again. Can put them or in an Instagram. audience depending on There's how so long. much stuff you can do with video that you can't really do with, like, say, just an image mm-hmm. or just, just text, text, which just makes it so powerful, I think. Yeah, I mean, what do you... What are you, I mean, excited about with with video in terms of, you know, getting into this space? I know you've been doing video for a long time, but... You know, it's crazy to see the evolution of the mobile video. To me, I remember, like, I I remember, I think I was, like, a sophomore in high school when I got my... Or uh, college, when I got my first iPhone. And, like, what drove me crazy, as well as, at the time, all, you know, my teachers, my professors in college about video, is that it's crazy to see the evolution of how vertical video went from like you do not use that to now it's kind of being used on purpose for social media. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of yeah. being shot horizontal traditionally, which Portrait. I, I'm still right. I'm still you know all about. I don't like vertical video anyway. But it's crazy to see how much that's changed in just a few few matter of short years just from social media. Social media has opened up such a huge I don't even know how to describe well, it. Like there's, just, it shifts everything. Yeah. I mean yeah. It, it you know Back in, back in the day, you know, everybody would think that you need some, like, high... A soda pop only costs a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> the you think you need some, like, high product, like, like high production video. But a lot of times, you know, on social media specifically, just grab your phone, yeah. you know. Obviously, for product videos, you want it to look much more professional. But, you know, there's, two, there's so many different things you can do with it. I mean, there, you can... You know, on Instagram, you're not really going to create this professional video unless you're doing advertising mm-hmm. or running ads. But, I mean, you just grab your video, I mean, your your phone, and create a video yeah, every day. Up. Yeah, yeah. the formats are just so different. Like Larry said, you know, it, it switched from being landscape to portrait, and now the duration of videos, you know. You can pl- play something and create something for 30 seconds that appeals to a different audience in a different way than something that's five minutes long as a you know, product inf- infomercial type of thing. I used so. to yell at my wife when I would get a video or she would share a video or we'd have to put a video on, on something and she'd shoot it her- vertically. It's like, what oh. the hell? You always <laughs> have <laughs> to do horizontal. <laughs> and now it's like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, now it's, no, it's it doesn't free matter. Fall. Because even if someone's consuming the video, they could be watching it like this. And sometimes I'm mm-hmm. like looking at it and I get a horizontal video on my phone and I'm looking at it like, regularly I know you can't see how I'm holding my hand right now <laughs> but normally as you would hold a phone and I'd have to turn it to see so it's almost better to consume the video yeah. at a vort- vertical format in that way so it is it's pretty interesting I don't know about everybody else but I'm lazy and hate unlocking my phone so I'll just watch like a landscape video barred out because I don't feel like unlocking it just to, tw- to uh, flip it you know uh, what I mean so screen I, rotation lock. screen rotation oh, you, sorry you yeah keep it locked I keep it locked yeah. so part of me would prefer to watch a portrait video because my phone's big and I'd rather watch it you know vertically mm-hmm. so it does yeah it depends on what it's for and the intention yeah, definitely yeah and the other best. thing is like they stand out more in the news feed exactly like a yeah. vertical video yeah because yeah. all the yeah Instagram it, and social media you know you're scrolling up and down so the formats are totally different yeah, like I'm a, taking a drone video I took you know and normally making it on like a 1080p you know um, horizontal view, and I go to make an Instagram story. I gotta rescale the whole thing. Whatever, yeah, just yeah to it's it. totally different. Or you can just crop it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoom in. That's true. And that's so. that's. Uh, yeah, so you've made some video for a couple of different things. I mean, obviously, oh, we yeah. did the aeroactive product video, and I know you've done some like aerial drone shots, oh, right? Yeah. So I there's a lot for of use for um, that. A few golf or yeah, a few golf courses. Mm-hmm. Um, which those are pretty interesting, and those are crazy to look at from above. Uh, but I love seeing something you would you know normally look at from the ground and then when you bring it up to the air that well, it looks back totally there. different oh, yeah. I think the it's whole drone incredible. thing is even a thing in its by itself like yeah, if you can operate definitely. a drone and you can control the camera because I know the camera tilts mm-hmm. but you got to fly the drone too mm-hmm. I feel like that's like an industry in its own it's like almost like for a for handheld like having a steady cam person like that steady cam person is that's his thing. Yeah. That's what he knows to do. Yeah. It's like a drone person would know how to fly a drone and get the right angles and mm-hmm. 
because I'm we see it a lot in, in golf, and we're even considering doing some 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 new golf stuff that we're going to use Larry for. That he's going to bring his drone out, and we're going to do some cool shit. So, yeah, I mean, I I remember two years ago they said that drones were supposed to like blow up and take over the world, but it, for some reason it just hasn't happened. I, I don't know, maybe you know more, but I know that I remember two years ago they were, it was like one of the fastest growing yeah. mm-hmm. industries on the internet, and now. I don't hear as much about it. I mean, I know there's a lot of people with drones, but it was supposed to be like this multi-billion dollar yeah, business. I just yeah. don't I think know. it leveled off a little bit. It did yeah. level off. I'm right? happy it did because I think if it, if at the rate I saw it growing, it saw this whole drone industry growing. I saw it being illegal within a few years. Yeah, too many people. Right, too many people had yeah. them. You yeah, could, you could put. I mean, they were scared about weapons going on them. Yeah, yeah. I think on the consumer level though it is, but I don't know. You could tell me if I'm wrong, but Larry, but I think they're using them. In productions all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. From production, that's not what yeah. I mean. But they were saying it was going to be a multi-billion-dollar business in terms of sales, right? Of right. Drones. To a consumer standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just, I mean, I'm not saying the, the use of them. They're, they're using them. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I guess part of this, the worry was that now, like, the FTC AA? or FCC would have to get oh. involved. There was too many of them in the sky because now you're taking up airspace yeah. and like there was a lot like a lot of that going on so well, part of me thinks that it's they're almost a little too advanced like people oh, yeah. think that just because it's a product you could buy for a couple hundred bucks for the cheaper one like it sounds good but it's like not everyone can handle it you know what right. i mean so i feel like it requires a decent amount of skill which is good because you're right it cuts off the average person from flying around and doing something illegal or doing something dangerous so i don't know it's been really big just as far as like entertainment i mean i know a lot of like movies that use drones it's it's way cheaper well me and larry are big i'm always sending him instagram profiles of just aerial (laughs) photography that alone is like insane i mean it's like well i think golf courses it all used to be helicopter and now it could be just drones i mean it's the cost of it is right between a helicopter and you know someone flying a drone it's just not even comparable yeah the price Yeah. yeah absolutely i mean there are some courses that are like on the ocean that still use helicopters because it's just you know, they have this. They're, they're going over cliffs and yeah. stuff. It's kind of hard to get the drone in some of those places. But mm-hmm. I, I know, like now, a lot of golf, and I'm a big golfer, so a lot of golf courses that you wouldn't expect to have video of every hole because it used to be expensive to hire a helicopter yeah, to go through every hole. But now, you go on. I mean, Myrtle Beach golf courses, they all have them because they're simple. You grab a guy like yeah. you with a drone. And take you a couple hours. You go out there and do all the holes. It's, it's, have you ever flown a drone? I have. I, I yeah yeah, but it, a little hesitant. <laughs> no, I did, but I did it when I was working with Jim. Mm-hmm. He has them. What I what I didn't like about it is how affected they are by the wind. And you got to make sure that it's like. Do you remember what kind it was? They're getting better. It was now. just like his without the camera on it, like one of them white ones. But it was a cheap one. It was all like okay. maybe like. Yeah, they so as sell. you go up and pr- like as you go up in price, obviously it's in yeah, some wind. It's not going to move. Oh, so I remember it was like on, there's a lot like of like variables. like his would like go too high and like lose it would lose connectivity. Oh, wow. No, like, they're, they're way more advanced now. I mean, it's crazy. Like, they go like, like, like five miles. You can't see it. You got to rely on yep. the screen. And Larry has some couple you know scare oh, yeah. really close call yeah. stories about that. I remember when you brought it in the office and you were going to lift it up here and I got freaked out. I was like, because I've never actually like seen, actually seen one even that, that close. The propellers are pretty intense, right? And the right? thing the just wind, like hovers like, there. Yeah, yeah. It was insane. They're it was really amazing. cool. Until it started heading towards the TV and I got a little <laughs> I nervous. Know, the red light started blinking. And That's where the golf landing. club came in. Just get that one. <laughs> no way. Smack Not it out the of there. Yeah, it's a, it's a new way of, you know, creating content and marketing mm-hmm. things. It's and, a, and by the way, you know, those aerial views are very very interesting yeah. like to watch i mean if, I, if i'm a golfer that. and i want to see like the hole and like the water and like just like i'm very interested in those because when i i go to myrtle beach every year with a big trip and it's a little crazy but i scout out all the golf courses and i like nobody else does but well my father does a little bit but i'll go and i'll see like what clubs i can use and can i use a driver here can i you know like and i'll use those aerial views to actually mm-hmm. see what it looks like so yeah they're definitely, you know, video is, is, and I think it's just kind of at the beginning. I mean, we, we, you know, we think that we see video all over the place. I think it's going to be more and more and more and definitely. more. And I remember for like our business for a while, we were getting like inquiries about people who just wanted to hire us just to follow them around, like with video. 
And I think that's where it's going. Like people, celebrities are just going to doc. Yeah, everybody has the life. availability of documenting their life on a day to day basis. Just hiring someone like yourself. <laughs> Oh, like barstool, like they just yeah, follow, you're right? Yeah, get, like that's it's, good point. it's insane. Gary, yeah, they have a designated guy. Yeah. So, what would you recommend, Larry, to somebody who either has a brand, uh, whether it's a social media account, an actual product, just a you know a service based industry? Would you recommend that they you know buy some cheaper equipment, or do you think they should try to look for someone like you, a freelancer, or hire professional service? Something I, you know, with the rise of video and mobile, with social media, all that, everyone wants to share this video, like we're talking about. But it comes in, you know, as easy as it is to make a video, it's just as easy to take someone who calls himself a professional but delivers unprofessional results. So to me, that's a very low blow mm-hmm. to not only to the client that they're working with, but to other people like myself who are, I like to call myself a professional. Right. But when you want, when someone says, hey, I would love to make a professional video, you know, um, can you help me out with this? And it turns out to be completely trash. That's not good for anyone. Right. Even for someone who else who... You know, the industry of professional, anyone, anything professional. But what I would say, ooh, I mean, work with what you got to see if it's worth it. And then I would show it to someone who's unrelated, you know, in the topic. And then say, what do you think of this? Did I just sell you? And if they say, you know, maybe it's time to, you know, look into out, some outside help. Because, yeah. you know, people, there's talented people everywhere. Yeah, definitely. Maybe you could barter. You could barter yeah. with people, help, you know, depending on what you're doing in the business. If, you know, if you have something that the photographer wants, I mean... It always comes down to budget, and I yeah. think that's that's the same thing. Th- th- same thing with us, right? Like you have to out, you have to like weigh is like you're gonna spend thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars mm-hmm. or whatever you're gonna spend you in the video. Yeah. You know, you have to somehow make sure that it's economical for you, right? Yeah. So, you know, maybe try to find someone who's just starting, or maybe, um, you know, whatever. I mean, if you have a strategy for your video and you know it's gonna make you money, then you can invest in it. But I think really. Paul, your question really will more times than not come down to budget, like yeah. Yeah. what you can afford and what you can afford to spend on the video. Mm-hmm. Well, what is if someone, you know, didn't want to hire a videographer, or couldn't afford to hire a videographer and they wanted to start doing video for themselves? What what equipment do you know of that's like in a good price range for someone to just get started that would give them good mm-hmm. quality? You know, in the shooting and then also have, you know, the ability. I mean, I to think it depends later. on what the goal of it, that video was. Um, what about like product, like a product video? Maybe just focus on that. Would you do a DSLR camera? Would you have someone go out and get that? I or? mean, uh, in my, for me, yes, I would. <laughs> but to someone who doesn't have those capabilities, I mean, I hate to say it, but the iPhone camera is even that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, you know, Def- it definitely. Although is. it's not good at zooming in or zooming out, it doesn't take up the best audio. But if you're just doing something simply visual, absolutely use an iPhone. It's a good starting point. Yeah. You know, and if it doesn't like the way it looks, you know, clean it up or try something else and go back to it. But um, definitely, you know, good audio, I think is very, very important. Mm-hmm. Never skip out an audio. I would always use a microphone somehow, mm-hmm. whether it's, um, you know, a handheld in this video itself or just on top of, you know, um, on the camera. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Like I mean, the voiceover important. you're recording, I mean, even the, the, the mics that we have, we're recording on these, um, they're called blue. snowball, yeah, blue snowball, snowball blue, mics. Blue I mean, they're $50 on Amazon. And yeah, I, I mean, expensive. I think the, uh, you know, they're not, they're not the most professional mics, but I think they sound pretty good. They're good as long as they're not too loud, as long as they're not turned up too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, big, uh, if you, and Larry will that. tell you this, if you really study what good audio is, it's, it's usually how is the person's voice perceived on the video. So if you listen to this to, to like a novice, to someone who doesn't know anything about audio, they think that the louder... It is the better that it sounds. Really, if you talk to someone, who, a professional, they'll tell you like, no, no, no. The way that you like judge a mic is how closely it resembles the person who's talking. So, like we were having this discussion when you were on the phone, right? Like you like the way these blue blue snowballs sound, but if you like study up on it, that mic right there is what they recommend. If you don't have a three hundred, if you don't have three hundred dollars to invest in a mic because it actually is a very, very close representation of the person's real voice. And that's why I bought it. I mean, I could have easily so tell bought... tell people what that is. Do you, do you know offhand what, what kind of mic that is? Yeah, that's a Audio-Technica... It's the mic that Larry's on, just so everyone something. knows. Something. Yeah, Larry's been talking. It's like ATR... A D- yeah, ATR50 or something. 100 USB. Yeah, ATR100. Okay. And it has a... 
has a lot of different yeah, ports XLR on there. XLR and yeah. USB. XLR and USB. Yeah, explain XLR, Larry, and a little bit about like audio and your your yeah. opinion. As opposed to USB and quarter inch or even eighth inch uh, wires, XLR is the best out there. But then again, you know, you look at cameras now. Like my DSLR does not have an XLR input. Mm-hmm. So um, with my Rode mic, which is a very nice mic, it plugs right into the um, uh, eighth inch socket where you know had normal mic, yeah, yeah. Like that size. Um, so I think it more XLR means I would say is more important for like recording music. That's what I would say for a podcast. I mean, it might be a little overkill. I mean, then you need to have. A Don't mixer. those usually have to go into a mixer? Yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Actually, mixer. I saw something that converts it to a USB. I think the other day on Amazon, but that might be something to look into. And then look into, with yeah. the mixer, uh, we talked about it before. Require some microphones like the high end XLRs require phantom power mm-hmm. to supply power to the microphone, which uh, makes most mixers do. Yeah, but these mics, all the mics that we have, they click. click Connect directly into the computer yeah. via USB, like plug, so yeah. it's like plug and play, it's like super play. easy. Yeah, it's very and easy. It more simple than yeah. that. So if you did a video using your iPhone, right? You could do a video using your iPhone. You could do several different videos. You can easily bring them into your computer mm-hmm. and uh, use iMovie to put some things together, and then bring mm-hmm. bring in the audio using your you know voiceover that you may or may not have done during the video or after the video, and you can really really get some cool shit oh, from yeah. just. Kind of even, those yeah, kind of that kind of equipment. Using things. the headphones that the iPhone comes with as your microphone is even better. It's right even there. better. Mm-hmm. Uh, good lighting is also very very important. You guys should probably definitely know that. <laughs> yeah. Good lighting is very important. It definitely is. Uh, audio is. Yeah, I think audio is up there though. You know, it's yeah. funny you say that because when I was buying that mic over there, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm you def- love this mic. You're so in love with this mic. No, I am because I'm. I mean, I'm a novice in this stuff too. But I read a lot about it. Like I had the option of buying a blue snowball because that was one of them, and I had this ATR. I just think these blue snowballs look really cool. Dude, the one that I'm on, black, matte black. You I'm can't not, beat that. No, no, it looks great. Not that but, anyone that's listening. No, no, can it see looks. It, but <laughs> we all think it's cool. It right? looks really good. But as we said, it's very awkward. We, we, if you're gonna travel with this thing, where are you gonna put it? Yeah, they're just giant balls. It's, like, like, a, it's a giant it's ball. Like a yeah. Size. Number one. Number we have we have giant balls. We have giant balls. Yes. Yeah. Snowballs. Snowballs. Go ahead. Uh, also, when I read it, they basically said that that mic, for what it was, is is the best representation. And they said that you almost can't tell the difference between that one and one of those three hundred dollar mics. Now, I guess the people who really know the difference would. I I I don't know, but I read a lot about it, and they got to go. Now, we were looking at some. Really, really high end podcast the other day, and they're all using that mic. So, I don't know anything about it. I'm just telling you what I read. Yeah, the bottom line is, though, is that you can get some really good equipment and you can use your camera phone to produce a pretty decent, you know, even product video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think where I was going with that whole <laughs> story was that Larry's correct. Like, somebody was saying, there's this guy on YouTube who works for, I don't know if it's B&H. You know, in the city or yeah, whatever, yeah, and basically photo. he said, like, you know, people will forgive you for bad video, but bad audio, they won't stick around. Yeah. Like, if it's like crackling and like oh, crap in your ear, you won't, yeah, you can't yeah. listen to it. Right, the volume's inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Right, and even if you're interested in the video, but audio, real, I mean, if if the audio is good, people will watch bad video. <laughs> yeah, you got big echoes in your room and stuff. It really, <laughs> or sucks. even just like if you put in a sound effect. You know, if we're talking like this and all of a sudden, and boom, boom, this loud, yeah, no, boom, 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 over the top sound, stupid sound things. effect, yeah. that kills it too. So it's not just, you know, the microphone. It's more so the entire audio. You know, if the the music you put in this video is too high, it kills out your your, your voiceover. That's another bad thing. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely headphones for that part. Sure. <laughs> you want to use headphones and watch your levels. Um, yeah, I see a lot of podcasters and stuff wear headphones. Like, I don't see... Yeah, we were talking about that before we started when you were still on the conference call, just about... Because you guys talked about so much stuff without me. Yeah, we, we were yeah, like, hey, well, you missed you, out. You, well, you let... Right. You let our guests sit here for an hour. It wasn't that, that was fine. It was fine. I was getting uh, texts on my phone. You're being so rude. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, like, ridiculous. The guy right, tells you he's right, on his right, way, right, and you get on okay. a call with a client who you know is going to keep you for three hours. Hey. I'm sorry. It's Friday. Yeah, it's TJF. But yes, the microphone that Larry's on that Jason is talking up so much uh, has a connection for headphones. So You know what was crazy was watching it on the computer here with the um, raising the volume on it. Oh, yeah. That, that, you know, on the bottom of this microphone, there's a volume adjuster and it adjusted 
the uh, volume on the computer um, itself. Right, Charlie, right, right into cool. the yeah. Yeah, software. Yeah, so I guess that that's that's just the output volume of the microphone. And so if you were wearing headphones, yes, uh, it would adjust. It would that, adjust how right? loud it would be. Yeah. So yeah, one. I mean, that's again, like Kevin said, that's advanced stuff. I mean, you just got to start small. What you have, whether it's a Apple headphones that came with your phone, or you want to buy something from Best Buy or Walmart or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like yeah, Larry said, I, it's just knowing what are the right things to put in, and and, and it's it's a weird it's a weird thing because I was talking to Kevin about this. Is like you know, money rewards speed right so like getting stuff out there is much more important than getting it done like perfect yeah but there's also an argument for getting professional video like sometimes it's okay to grab your phone and record yourself and then other times you want some really good professional video like when you're trying to sell a product or you're trying to you know, tell a story about yourself. I mean, those kind of things you want professional, but when you're doing day-to-day videos that you yeah. want to like connect with your audience, yeah, it's like your phone. Fun. So it's, yeah. it's a very weird kind of, yeah, there's still standards that need to be met. So yeah. it's a fine line. It's a tough, tough thing to figure out, but it's definitely important to businesses and brands, whatever it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's so much crazier to think about like, I, mean, I didn't really touch on it too much in college, but film, mm-hmm. editing film, like that was movie magic. That was when like stuff came alive. But you don't really see that too much anymore. Yeah, it's kind of antiquated. You know, now it's now. all on a computer. It wasn't it's all digital. It was tape. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't tape and actually cutting. That's insane. You know, film. I can't even believe people did that. Right? Oh, yeah, I mean, it it sense. It's just crazy. Well, you guys grew up when it was like um, getting film. Uh, see, I don't even know the words for it. No. Developed when you got film developed. Though. Like, like I photos, that when not I was video. Real young. Yeah, even I guess we going to see guys for shop right. No, I mean when I when I was in college, I took some film classes, and they were it was well, was obviously it wasn't advanced editing f- software, but there was still yeah. editing software. I mean, I did I did do like film in in high school where you developed a film in the f- in the dark. Right, well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like yeah, trying to get a in dark room. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of dark work. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah, but it's crazy how much you can do. Yeah. And like I w- I was thinking about this the other day. Is like I really I have video from when I was a kid. But it's on like some tape that I can't even get access to anymore. <laughs> you don't even know how to it's view like, I'm it. I'm just thinking yeah. I'm blown away by the fact that everything we do now is documented. Yeah, yeah. Like my kids, every step of my kids' life is gonna be somewhere, and I'm gonna be able to watch it. Mm-hmm. It's just insane to me. And who, I guess, who knows what it's gonna be like? Maybe we won't it's be able to play scary. the videos, videos that we have now. That are just built like holograms and shit. I don't know. Yeah, but it's, it's crazy to think about. Like crazy. everything's gonna be documented. Yeah. Even think well, I feel like Paul, you and I, we grew up. From, you know, adolescence to adult when Facebook kind of was still, ha- like, becoming. So, like, there's pictures of us using Facebook when we were, how old were we? You know, high school. Yeah. I don't even 14, know. 14. So, we saw us we, go, we saw us go from braces through <laughs> high school to college, and yeah. now we're working. There's a lot of records of things you don't yeah. want to well, be. Well, that's yeah, what exactly. I'm saying. It's yeah. probably a good thing that I didn't have <laughs> exactly, Facebook when yeah. I was a kid. But I literally, I couldn't find you a picture of my college experience right now. Right. None. At the, yeah, so at the same time, it's nice to be able to look back and be like, oh my God, Paul, remember that night when we were 18, we did this, that, and the other yeah. thing. And, you know, 20 years from now, we'll look back in that picture. Hopefully, it may not be there, but <laughs> it, most likely. Probably well, I think it's nice when you have kids like Kevin and I. Yeah, it's like document documenting everything. everything yeah. is like, it's going to be there forever. It's digital. I mean, I don't really know what's going to come after digital. I mean, Oof, if there is something, but you know, it's, it's always, always there. there yeah. I can always go on Facebook and I can see my son when he was a baby, mm-hmm. and like now, nah, it's like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, think about how many how many pictures we take on our phones. Way it's, too that's many. free. Back in the day, you had to go to the CVS and develop them, or shop and write, or wherever you guys went to get yeah. Yeah. things yeah. developed. Like, the one hour <laughs> photo film, yeah. or something, right? Insane. There was like a comedian we watched like a while ago. I don't know if it was like Bill Burr or something, but someone was talking about that. How like. They oh no he's that Judd Apatow Judd Apatow one yeah. and he was like back when we took a picture we we couldn't see it we were like hope that looks yeah. good yeah and you got one shot at it and everyone's eyes are closed you look like shit where now you do it nine times you make it a perfect you know pose and yeah you just keep and everything with Photoshop how much you could alter something yeah even just apps on your phone just to quickly yeah. like adjust oh, yeah. certain things I mean there's a lot you can do to kind of enhance what you're what you're recording it's and so fast video is where it's at man mm-hmm. like I said you're you're in a good, really, I think a good space. Like just like I think we're in a good space with the e-commerce because I think everything's going to go online. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to be buying online. No one's going to be going to the store anymore. I think you're in a really good spot. Yeah, yeah. it goes hand video and you know e-commerce and businesses go hand in hand. So oh, yeah. we're going to be we're, we're going to be working. seeing a lot of you a lot. Yeah, we're seeing a so. lot of you. We're going to be working right. with Larry. He's going to do some product uh, videos with us, and he's going to do some lifestyle stuff with us around the studio, so you guys can see 
my beautiful face and Jason's <laughs> bald <laughs> Who has been ball lying to you about this? Somebody telling you that you're oh good looking? God. Like, who's been telling you this? It's not a word I would be using to describe <laughs> your looks. <laughs> well, anyway, it was good to have you on, Larry. You we're gonna have Thank we're gonna have him on again. Me. We got a lot of stuff to talk about with him. So yeah, I want to hear about your I want to hear about your you building your brand and your Instagram. Thank you. Why don't you give your Instagram out real quick? Uh, my personal one is at L A R Garafola G A R. Uh, I can't even spell my last name. G A R A F O L A L A R. That's Larry Garafola. That's my personal one. But uh, a page I run is at Outlet underscore Collective. It's a compilation of uh, passion through photography, videography, and other forms of visual art. So check that out. Very yeah, cool. We'll have you back on and talk a lot about that one because you got a lot of yes. lot going on with it. So, cool. Awesome, guys. Thank you. So, you got anything else, Jay? No, I'm good. All right. Thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. This has been episode number 67. Check everything out on ecommerceuncensored.com, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Later. See ya. Bye-bye.